there's a lot of racism in this country, but it's not the people that are being called Nazis and Hitler aficionados and things of that nature. It's, it's the left. The left has become wholly racist. There, there's really nothing else I can add to that. I, I don't know where any decent Democrat is anymore. I even tweeted out actually yesterday, I said, are there any self-proclaimed liberals who are non-woke who still consider themselves Democrats? Because I, I would love to talk to them. Um, and basically a bunch of people, the, the responses that I got, I got probably, I don't know, several hundred responses. The, the answers that I got were mostly Bill Maher and Tulsi Gabbard. Now, Bill Maher, as I've said many times, I think he's just sort of a guilty libertarian, but I would love to talk about it with him. I, does he consider himself a Democrat anymore? Like, the Democrats have gone woke, so is Bill Maher really that, if the main thing that he fights is the woke stuff, which it seems to be, so I don't know if he's a Democrat. As for Tulsi, I, obviously I'm, I'm friends with Tulsi and I've had her on the show. I would love to discuss this further. Does she at this point still consider herself a Democrat? I mean, Tulsi actually issued a tweet last week when racist mayor of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot, said she would only be interviewed by black or brown people. Tulsi told the truth on Twitter. She called it out as anti-white racism. So I don't know if she can consider herself part of that party anymore. I don't know, I would love to discuss it with her. A few other names that came up were Brett Weinstein, uh, Sam Harris, Christina Hoff Summers. I don't know that any of them consider themselves Democrats. I know they don't consider themselves conservatives, but my argument would be that we're all conservatives right now if you wanna conserve anything decent that America has put forth in these last 250 years. In any event, to prove my point further, um, Chris Rufo, who is one of the great advocates fighting against critical race theory in all the schools. He is bringing lawsuits in state by state and we're seeing now states fighting against critical race theory in schools, which is phenomenal by the way. You don't want a horrifically toxic, dishonest set of ideas that teaches you that your skin color is the most important thing about you, the thing that you should either be the most proud of or most ashamed of. You don't want to be teaching this to kids and yet we have done it and now we see it has burst forth into everything in terms of our political discourse and cultural and everything else. Uh, but anyway, Chris Rufo went on Mark Lamont Hill's show on black, it's called Black News Tonight. And listen to this exchange and you tell me who the racist is. If I were to ask you what, particularly if you're saying whiteness is a thing that is being constructed as negative and shouldn't be, name, name something positive that you like about being white. Well, sure, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll answer with, a, with a, a thing. There, There's a lot of documents that are floating around public schools that say things like uh, timeliness, showing up on time is a white supremacist value or a white value, white dominant value, things like rationality, things like the enlightenment, things like, uh, you know, uh, uh, objectivity. And uh, these are very strange things to be ascribed to a racial identity. My view is that these are actually should be ascribed to every individual human being. Every individual human being, regardless of whatever racial category we impose on them. Name something positive about being, that you believe is positive about being white. <laughs> Again, I, I don't buy into the framework that the world can be reduced into these metaphysical categories of whiteness and blackness. I think that's wrong. I think we should look at people as individuals. I think we should celebrate uh, different people's accomplishments. And uh, again, I think the idea, you, you mentioned Ignatiev. Ignatiev says the goal is to, quote, abolish the white race. Um, in any other context, this would be interpreted as a near genocidal slur. Uh, I don't buy into it. The reason I'm not gonna answer your question is I reject that categorization. I think of myself as an individual human being uh, with my own capabilities. And I would hope that we could both judge each other as individuals uh, and uh, come to common values on that basis. Bravo, Chris Rufo. You've got a fan in Dave Rubin. Who, who is the racist in that conversation? Who is trying to racialize everything and who's trying to de-racialize everything? As Rufo repeatedly points out, he wants people to be treated as individuals. So he doesn't even buy into the argument. But Mark Lamont Hill is playing a very dangerous game right there, implying that if you are for things like working hard in essence, and if you are uh, you know, you're willing to be on time and all of the things that Rufo has talked about that are baked into critical race theory, that these are somehow white supremacist ideas. So he's telling him, well, tell me something good about being white, except Chris is saying these, these things are not about being white. 
They're about being a decent human being. These are the things that bring us all together that make humanity flourish and everything else. So there's one person racializing and then one person deracializing. And yet if you were to listen to the mainstream narrative, they would get who's the racist backwards. Rufo followed up on Twitter and he wrote this, the solution, reject the premise of race essentialism in all its forms. Stop using crude racial labels and pejoratives to demonize individuals. Mark follows the critical race theory playbook. Lump your enemies into crude identity categories, load those categories with negative connotations, enforce a taboo against expressing positive traits, and use guilt and shame to manipulate individuals into your political cult. Don't take the bait. I love the clarity from Chris Rufo right there. They are playing a game where when, when Lamont Hill, when he says, tell me something good about being white, it's a false question. Goodness and hard work and decency and not judging people based on the color of their skin is not inherently white. These are enlightenment values. Not, they're beyond enlightenment values. These are, uh, these are values, these are, I would say, biblical values. These are values that, that the Greek philosophers taught us that had nothing to do with skin color. Now we have a movement where they're trying to make everything about skin color. So, okay, so Mark Lamont Hill on, on his, it's Black News Tonight, I've never seen the show before that, uh, that's fine. But remember, if he had called it White News Tonight, everybody would go in bananas, right? We just, we just absolutely know this. But what we've seen is that the left is the one that is racializing everything. So if you don't believe me, we've talked about this before, but the left is literally the Democrats in a completely partisan vote decided to stop schools. That, well, you know what, I'm gonna read you the quote from Fox because this will just, it'll just get to it right there. Uh, this is from Fox News. Senate Democrats blocked an amendment to the new COVID-19 hate crimes act that would have barred universities that discriminate against Asian Americans from accessing federal funding. Senators Ted Cruz from Texas and John Kennedy from Louisiana co-sponsored the unsuccessful amendment which would have banned federal funding from going to colleges and universities that discriminate against Asian American applicants when being recruited by schools or applying. I'll give you a quote from Cruz and Kennedy themselves. Despite their calls to end racism, it is clear Democrats are only paying lip service to fighting discrimination against Asian Americans and will allow targeted discrimination against them to continue at America's universities and colleges. So if you're not clear on what happened here, in a completely partisan vote, the Democrat senators decided to take out a line from this bill that was saying you cannot at universities discriminate against Asians. So it's not just that say the, the cultural elite or whatever you would consider someone like Mark Lamont Hill, the, the, these, the lefty thinkers in the internet space are being racist. It is that the Democratic Party is racist. Please, please somebody show me where the Republicans have passed a bill that has been nearly that racist. Now I know people might say, but wait a minute, what about those, those voting bills in Georgia where they didn't want people to get water on lines while they're voting? There's nothing racist about it. There's nothing racist about it. And by the way, there's nothing racist about having to have an ID. And if you think minorities can't get an ID, you're probably racist. Are you telling me the average black person can't get on a plane? I'm fairly certain they can. Can they go buy a six pack of beer? I'm fairly certain they can. And by the way, I've heard a million people on the right say this. If you could actually prove that there is some subset of people that cannot get IDs because of race or for any other reason, me, despite all my libertarian leanings, I would be for the government using some money to literally bring these people to a place where they could take a picture and get an ID. And you know, when I had Nikki Haley on, who of course is the former governor of South Carolina, she talked about how she did just that as the governor of South Carolina. They said to their, all of the citizens, they said, if you cannot get an ID for whatever reason it is, we will help you get it. They did this big program and I don't remember the exact number. We'd have to go back into the interview and check it. But basically it was like a dozen people showed up. I think it was 15, was it 15-ish? I think that's what she said, yeah, 15-ish people showed up to take advantage of this. So they racialize everything and just lie about what it is that Republicans are doing. It's, it's just extraordinary.